To thee we come, O Lord, our God. by the church on this 15th Sunday in the ordinary to reread and to reflect upon the Word of God. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Indeed, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets, the lion roars, who will not be afraid. The Lord speaks, who will not prophesy. Trust in the Lord, your God, and he will be found firm. Trust in his prophets, and he will succeed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And as it was in the beginning, is now, and Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, and God, Almighty God, and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we 
praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of the Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant us the zeal to lead others to your Son, the wisdom to deal with those who reject Him, and the faith to bear testimony to your Spirit within us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Creator and Redeemer of all the faithful, grant unto the soul of our departed brother, Robert Durkee, forgiveness of his sins. May our devout prayers obtain for him the pardon promised by our Savior, we ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jimmy, will you please proclaim the word? Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judea. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesying in Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary and royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from the fall of the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel, the word of the Lord. Today's rational. But how can the people call a him whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? Jesus says to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jimmy, I'm sorry. Yes, you're fine. Okay. Uh, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the word, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace, that he granted us in the beloved, in him we have redemption by his blood and forgiveness of our transgressions in accordance with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accordance with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ in heaven and on earth. In him we are also chosen destined in accordance with the purpose of the one who accomplished all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance towards redemption as God's possession 
the praise of his glory, the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Mark. summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a place, a house, Stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Now and forevermore, amen. But how can the people call up him whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? These words are taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, fellow disciples, unto the Lord. In today's Gospel according to Mark, Jesus gives instructions in the walking papers to his disciples to preach the good news of the gospel of God. In the gospel of Luke chapter 9 verse 10 we read, and when the apostles returned they explained to him what they had done. He took them and withdrew in private to a town called Bethsaida. Let us reflect, my dear brothers and sisters, fellow disciples, upon the cost of discipleship. As we read the Holy Gospel, 
of the four evangelists, we see in each of the Gospels Jesus calling his first chosen. But there is a common theme of the calling of the first chosen. When Jesus called and said, come and follow me, they left everything. They left their homes, their families, as well as their sources of income to simply follow him. Jesus later reminds them at the Last Supper words that are found in the Gospel of John. It was not you who chose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain. And so today as we gather, let each of us ask, why do we come to church? Is it what our parents brought us up to do? Is it a force of habit? Or is it something else? I firmly believe that most Christians come to church to give thanks for the blessings from God. They also come to share a communion with Christ who is present. As he said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name. And he promises that he will be amongst us. And finally, I believe that people, honest and true Christians, come to church to share fellowship with others as his disciples returned and said unto the Lord, the many miracles and wonders that they brought unto society. In today's gospel, we see the beginning of Christian discipleship, and I spoke about the cost of being a disciple unto the Lord. As in the great Christian hymn, we gather together, my brothers and sisters, we gather together to ask for the Lord's blessings. In the same spirit as his disciple, share with him the joy of being chosen. You know, in the hustle and the bustle of today's world, we are so many times deafened and blinded from the chaos, the confusion, the loudness in the problems of this world. In contrast, we come together on the Lord's day to give praise and honor to God contained within the safety and the refuge of this blessed church as we offer prayers in thankfulness for the blessings we have received and for the blessings and prayers for others. I have read throughout the years in my study that Jesus whittled down three directives that I have called a triangle of faith. Among these directives, Jesus says to his first chosen as he sends them out, two by two, be simple. We read that Jesus instructed them to take nothing for their journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not take a second tunic.
The second directive is Jesus sent them out to preach and to seek peace. He said to them, whatever, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave them and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. And the third directive, as we read in today's gospel, preach the gospel. We read so that they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. My dear brothers and sisters, today's discipleship is not any different from what the Lord first taught. And he says to us as we gather in this sacred place, and as we gather at the table of the Lord, in which we consecrate the bread and the wine which becomes his body and blood, he is among us. He says to us, be simple, ensuring your faith with the Lord. We saw that the apostles great did great things, not only when he first called them, but we read in the Acts of the Apostles other miracles that they performed. He says to us, be simple in not only sharing your faith, but seek peace with others in the love of Christ. Love is a binding agent. And if we were to sum up the entire ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sacrifice that he made for you as well as for me, we see love magnified. And the third directives, directive that our Lord gives to each of us today as we sit in his divine presence. To go out, to teach others about the love and the forgiveness through Christ. When we look at the calling of the twelve, they came from different backgrounds, but they all had a common mission. And this is the mission that we are called upon not to sit idly and let the world pass us by, but we have a mission. As Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And so whenever we gather and we hear the word of God heard and preached, which is not only a sacrament, but recently has become a solemnity, that we are transformed as they were transformed, not only with wisdom and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within, but also, most importantly, that they were to be the emissaries and the ambassadors as we are called upon to be emissaries and ambassadors of Christ. Irregardless whether or not we're young or old, we are called upon and those people that we come in contact with to share the good news, to preach the gospel, we must understand that Jesus needed 12, and out of 12, there were 72. And after the Pentecost, there were over 3,000. And this is how Christianity grew. We live in a world of chaos, 
We live within a world that rejects the Word of God and the very presence of Christ. And so our mission is not an easy one, as their mission was not. To go, to preach the Word, to seek peace, and to share the messages of love and forgiveness to all we come in contact with. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, God the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them, so that they may be consecrated in truth.
our gift of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the of his Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord of heaven, receive our offering and may the sacrifice of praise purify us in mind and heart and make us always ready to serve you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, look with favor upon the gifts we offer you on behalf of the soul of our faithful departed brother and blessed memory, Robert Durkee. Grant that his soul may be united with you in eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today, let us remember and pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us give God our thanks for the blessings that he has bestowed upon each of us. May we pray this day for peace in our world. In our prayers, let us remember all abused and neglected children, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all those victims of violence. May we give God our thanks for those who serve on our armed forces, both here and abroad, and pray that God would return them safely to their families. And Father, may we also Pray for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others 
the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless to accept and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and would spiritually and bodily in his entire being. He again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice, into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your servants just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the Immaculate Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, especially this day for Robert of Durkee, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleeps in peace. To all these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine in example, we say with confidence, Our Father, safeguard and healing remedy. Our Satan Master, awaken in all of us living faith, perfect love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, those who will not be receiving the Eucharist sacramentally, let us now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. 
I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord.
Lord Jesus Christ, send us forth as you sent forth your disciples to every corner of our community through this Holy Communion. Help us to speak your word with boldness and to lead the unconverted in your way. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Let us pray. Accept, O Holy Lord, our fervent prayers for the repose of the soul of our blessed brother, Robert Durkee, and grant that through this holy sacrifice that he may be cleansed from all human transgressions and attain everlasting life. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice is offered. Be acceptable to you and through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light, the real light, which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 